Good morning Year 6 and welcome to Monday's Maths lesson. So today we are going to be carrying on with our fraction work but we are going to move on to multiplying fractions. So a new scale, so we're moving away from adding and subtracting them. But to do that we need to think about how we simplify fractions and we did this last week. So as a warm-up can you remember how to simplify them? I'll give you a clue, you will need to use your factor bugs. So pause the video now and have a go at simplifying these four fractions. Okay, so what we need to do is, and I'm not as good at drawing on the screen as Miss Garraway, so you have to bear with me, is we need to use our factor bugs to find some common multiples common um, factors, sorry, of our numbers. So you should have done something similar to this. So two numbers that times together to make 10, one and 10, or two ooh, and five. And that would go on and on. And then you'd find a common multiple, um, in both of your factor bugs and the lowest common multiple um, is what you divide both numbers by. So if you did your one and your tens, you would find that both um, factor bugs have a five in, so we would be dividing this fraction by five. So five divided by five would give us one, 10 divided by five would give us Two. So if we simplified five tenths, we would get one half. Then we've got 12 twenty eighths. Now, if you did your factor bugs again, you'd know that they both have a four in them. So we're going to divide 12 by four, which would give us three. Draw it over there. And 28 by four, which would give us seven. Then this one, we would um, do our factor bugs again and we would find three in common. So 21 divided by three should have given you seven and 30 divided by three should have given you 10. So that's the answer to the first three. So one half, three sevenths and three tenths. Now the last question on the bottom is slightly different because this fits into our work we were doing at the end of last week of our mixed fractions. So you would have had to have worked this one out a little differently, okay? And to do this, we need to know our three times table. So if you think back to last week, this fraction, when the um, top half of your fraction is bigger than the bottom half, is called an improper fraction because it doesn't quite work out because the top is bigger. And to do that, to simplify this, we have to turn it into a mixed number, okay? So if you have a think, we've got our times tables down here. I've done your three times tables for you. And we need to figure out how many lots of three go into 14 without going bigger than 14. So the closest I can get to 14 here without being bigger is my 12. So I can get 3 into 14 to make 12 because I can't make 15 because I haven't quite got enough. And then that would be 1, 2, 3, 4 lots. So 4 would be my big number, my whole number, because I can get 3 in 4 times. So 3 whole into 4 times. And then I'd have to do a quick little sum. So I had 14. I've taken out 4 lots of 3. So I've taken out 12. Ooh. And so I do four take away two is two. And one take away one is nothing. So then I'm left with two. And my numerator, my denominator, sorry, is three. So I'm left if I simplified this with four and two thirds, which hopefully is the answer you got. So give yourself some ticks. Now that was just a recap because we might have to simplify um, later on in the lesson. 
So we are going to look at multiplying fractions. Now what I've done is I've given you a sum on the board and I've given you the answer already. So we've got four fifths, take away two thirds equals eight fifteenths. Okay, now what I want you to do is have a look at this sum and see if you can work out how we got this answer. Okay, so pause the video and have a little think and then unpause it when you think you've got the answer. And as a little challenge, why do you think this happens? Which is something to um, have a look at. Okay, hopefully you have realised that 4 times 2 equals 8 and 5 times 3 equals 15. So something that we've worked out is that actually with multiplying fractions, it's a different rule. You don't have to make them the same on the bottom, like without adding and subtracting. It's a completely different rule, even though we're working with um, fractions still. So with multiplying fractions, you can multiply any fractions together, whether they're the, they're the same denominator or not. All you have to do is times the top of the fraction, the numerators together to get the numerator of your answer and the denominators together to get the denominator of your answer. And that is all you have to do. So it's actually quite a bit easier than adding and subtracting fractions, okay? So what I want us to do is have a look at this one together and it should be pretty easy to get the hang of. So we've got two thirds times one quarter. So, we follow the rule, even though they're the same, uh, not the same, sorry, the different denominators. We need to times the bottom by the bottom and the top by the top. So two times one gives us two and three times four gives us 12. And that is really simple. That is all you need to do, okay? So two thirds times one quarter is two twelfths. So have a go at this one, okay? So pause the video and then have a go at working out the answer by yourself, first of all. Okay, so we've got six twelfths. So even though it's a big number, it doesn't matter. Times five sevenths, so. You'd need to know your 12 times table or um, 12 lots of 7. So we've got 6 times 5, which would give us ooh, 30, a giant 3. And then we've got 12 times 7, which would give us 84. So hopefully you've got the answer 30, 80 which is a big fraction which is why we're going to look at simplifying in a second but we'll just check that we've got the method right and then a final one for you to have a go so 20 25ths times 8 tenths so have a go at that one using the same method okay so we should have 20 25ths which is a big number times eight tenths so we know we times the top by the top so 20 times eight which gives us 160 and then we times 25 by 10 which would give us 250 now if you were working with fractions, 160, 160 over 220, 250 um, is a very, very big fraction, okay? So in some cases, you will be asked, or you'll need to, simplify the answer, okay? Now, I'm not expecting you and this one to work out your 160 and 250 times tables. Something that's really easy that I can see for example, on this one, is that we've got our um, zero on the end. So I know that something I could do is divide them both by 10 to make them 
smaller, so that would give us 16 25ths to simplify it. And then I could work with my 16 and 25 times table, um, drawing my factor bugs like we did in the starter to work out if I can get that fraction down any smaller or if that is as simple as I can get it, okay? So on the sheet that you're going to do, you're going to be asked to simplify your fractions, okay, to practice the skill. So before we do that, can we, uh, can you pause the video and have a go at working out these fractions? So I'd work them out, so times the top by the top, the bottom by the bottom, which would give you your answer, and then use your factor bugs like we did at the start to simplify it down to the smallest that you can get. So pause the video now and have a go. Okay, so three times eight would give us 24. Four times nine would give us 36. And then if you did your factor bugs, you would realize that 12 is a factor of both of those numbers. So I divide the top by 12, which would give us two, and divide the bottom by 12, which would give us three. So the answer to this one is actually simplified all the way down to thirds, okay? Don't worry too much if you didn't simplify it, as long as you've got the method as well, so you've got the answer right. Then we've got five times three would give us 15. And then 12 times 10 gives us 120. And if you drew your factor bugs, worked out your factors, 15 is a factor of both of those numbers. So 15 divided by 15 gives us one. And 120 divided by 15 gives us ooh, an eighth. So one eighth would be the simplified answer to that. And finally, we've got six times four gives us 24. Ooh, and nine times seven would give us 60. Ooh, three. I'm sure Miss Garraway wouldn't do a huge three like that. Um, our factor bugs will show us that 3 is a factor of both. So 24 divided by 3 is 8. 63 divided by 3 is 21. So simplified down, our answer should be 821. So give yourself some tips if you've got all of those right. And then now you are ready to move on and have a go at the worksheet. Now on the top of the worksheet, it talks about two different methods to simplify it down. But don't worry about those. When you're asked to simplify it, use this method. So work out the answer first and then divide it and get the answer smaller. So don't worry about um, cancelling, which is simplifying it down before you times it because that gets a little bit complicated. So ignore those bits on the sheet and just go with the method we've done together. Okay, so well done.